So here, around minute 7, as you can see, I'm very low in net worth. And most of the heroes, like I said, they can fall back into some plan B. Into either a jungle, either a fight. Now I got my shard, which helps me fight. I have my level 18. I do a lot of magic damage and I do a lot of right leg damage. And now it's time for me to show up as the top net worth and just take care of business, <laughs> in a way. Now in this game, we decided to go aggro because Luna is a good aggro hero and all this stuff, but compare this to your pubs, this is somewhat irrelevant info, I would say. You're not really gonna use this in your pubs. I'm gonna try to not talk too much about the laning stage. Whatever happens, happens. I wanna show you the fact that uh, the, the lane went wrong and I had a bad lane and that's all you need to know. That's all you need to know in your pubs as well, when it happens. So here, Around minute 7, as you can see, I'm very low in net worth, uh, not in a great spot. I was abandoned on the lane as well, now I need to leave the lane completely. And it's minute 7, and a lot of the times what I see people make as a mistake is they, they get stubborn and they keep sitting on the lane and they keep pinging or they keep getting angry. When in reality all you gotta do is think ahead, think about your next move, and most of the heroes, like I said, they can fall back into some plan B. Into either a jungle, either a fight. Rarely your carry cannot hit jungle at all. And rarely your carry cannot do anything in any fight. So there is always something to be done outside the box. Because for me, this is outside the box. Now, this lane, like, fuck it. I cannot do anything about it. I saved my skill points to, to see if I'm going to go jungle or not. And then I'm falling back into my... Plan B, which is just hit a few jungle, get the mask and relax. Now a lot of heroes can do this. Morphling with Morbid Mask can do this. TB with Illus, no items can do this. Uh, Raid King can do this as we already saw. TA can do this. And the heroes that cannot do this, you can look to get a fight. Let's say you're a Void with Chrono, just go use the Chrono somewhere. Even Anti-Mage with Mana Void, you can use your Mana Void somewhere if you're completely destroyed. Now I'm falling back into my plan B mode without any emotion. I was freed of emotion because this is the main thing. You need to be freed from emotion, from this annoyance potentially. In a lot of the games, like I, I spoke about this again in previous episodes, you can take mid for two waves. Let's say your guy in this game, it's a windrunner who is ganking, but th this is again irrelevant. Because you're not gonna get to do this a lot of the times. But let's say in a game where you have a guy who can farm jungle, right? You have Ember Mid, who can easily clear two camps with his flame guard. You should tell him, yo bro, go go clear this camp for me. Maybe you even stuck for himself. You go stuck for Ember and tell him, I stuck for you, man. Come take the stack. I take mid for two waves, then I'm gonna recover. And stuff like this is thinking how to work with each other in the team. And I know that in pubs, it's so much harder and it's so much harder to think without emotion. But just follow this logic for a second. You have nowhere to go. All you need to, to think is how to recover. You see the opening for mid because your guy can farm jungle. And then you take the first step. You stuck for him. And then you tell him, I stuck for you, man. Go take the stack. Let me farm. You get more gold from the stack than you get from mid. And you made a good deal with him. So in a way, you invested your time for him to be here and then you take his spot. And I've done this in pubs as well. When you do this in pubs, so rarely, if you do this in the same tone, somebody's gonna tell you, no, man, fuck you. He needs to be a maniac. And I know we meet maniacs in pubs, but they're not that much. If you do this 10 times, you're gonna have seven success. Seven out of 10. So this is seven times more chance of winning than before. I recover, one, two waves. I was waiting in action. And now, this is also another very good thing. When a fight happens, somewhere, somewhere on the opposite side of the map, as a carry who is behind, or more so, yeah, as a hero that is behind, now, I don't want to be part of this, first of all. Even if I see that I could get two kills, my eyes, I need to recover. With this stuff, I'm not going to a fight. Straight tip it up because I saw that they tip it bot. This is a concept that should be followed when you're playing from behind. Again, the Raid King game that I showed you guys in the previous, the first series was a different game because I was playing almost from ahead. I had a lot of free time, decently free lane. The game was smooth. Now this is not a smooth game. Now 
I'm not joining anything. I have my eyes straight focused on this mission. Come back in the game. I got two waves because of this reaction. You don't do this unless you see reaction again. You need to see them tip somewhere. You need to be sure that you're not gonna die there. Until this moment, you keep applying the safe rules. You keep pushing maybe mid, farm this smoke camp, and then react after you see the info. And I go back to the usual. Triangle, keep farming, keep focusing on my next item timing. And now in this moment, when you get into the zone that you start clearing the camps, you start catching up, you need to think, what is my next item timing? Like the Red King game, I was telling you, it was the Radiance, which is very greedy. This is a hard to pull up approach. In this one, Dragonlance is going to make me very strong and potentially a lot of levels in my queue so I can join up a fight. So for the next four minutes, I'm going to be almost absent from the game. The main thing that I look at in most of these games is the minimap. I care about the minimap, not so much about what I see in front of my eyes. As you can see, another fight happening. I don't care. Somebody dies. I cannot do anything. Unless they, they make a mistake. So as you can see, I'm not reacting. This is the second time I don't react. Because reaction has a chance of backfiring. And if I'm the guy, even though I say I'm catching up, but I'm actually almost top network. But the thing with Luna is that he, I want to be further ahead to feel like the hero is going to be strong. Some heroes that can flash farm, you, f you feel like you need to be further ahead than it looks like. It's almost like an alchemist. If I don't get enough, because I have a madness. I invested my gold into farming item and I invested my skill build into farming. So there is nothing I can do about fighting. So this... 4.9k gold is investments into farm, not into fighting. So I cannot fight unless they make a mistake. This was a mistake. Just a random thing happened. This doesn't matter. And as you can see, I kept sitting here. I kept triangle, farm this, maybe open up. We lost mid tower, which is kind of annoying again for, uh, for Luna, Medusa, TB, all these kind of heroes who want to farm ancients. They took my mid tower and this could may result into some problems, but it doesn't matter. Push the tower, keep farming. I keep my eyes on the dragon lens. Potentially some more levels because I invested a lot in my skill build. And for the next three minutes, it's just repeating the same exercise. <laughs> I want to show you the next big moment after. So now this is the moment. I have the dragon lens. I have the necessary level to fight, like I said. Now I invested some more into, into my fighting part of the game. The madness with Moonglaives and Lunar Blessing is investment in farming. Now I invested into fighting. Now it's time for you to sh for me to show up because I'm top network. Now if I don't show up, this might be bad because if I don't show up, their lead is going to get, is going to keep extending. So I'm not, I'm not helping my team at all, even though I'm top network. That's why I want to fight. And like I said this so many times, the mid wave is where people want to fight a lot. Midwave is the center of the game. People want to fight a lot. They're always ready there. It's just easy to connect. And there is always going to be a lot of fights there. So this is the fight. I decided to show up that I'm strong, finally. And then we win the fight. During to, due to positioning, all this stuff, again, for me, it's... It's all relevant to show you why, who is hitting what spells. The concept should be applied. And for me, the concept is what's winning, not winning. It's not necessarily winning you the game, but more so helping you as an individual. Monkey on the other side wasted his biggest timing, which was BKB. And Monkey, you see the difference actually now. He made an investment purely into fighting. Look at this item build. This is investment purely into fighting against a guy who invested both fighting and farming. And now if he lost the fighting investment and he didn't invest into farming, he's not going to be able to catch up with me. I'm going to out farm him. Runa is an overall very... It's a decent hero. Because it's cheap, cheap investments. But it can backfire as well. It has downsides. Not everything is advantage. You can easily fall off in a game. You feel like the hero doesn't scale enough because I'm buying a lot of cheap items. 
one wrong fight can turn into disaster. Anyway, next uh, big moment of the game is the BKB. With the BKB, I can potentially think of Roche, again, a decent fight, so on, so on. The opportunities will be presented to you as long as you follow your plan. The good part about this item, by the way, is you can disassemble Dragonlance to make BKB and then you buy it back. No, look at me. I am 50 gold away from BKB. If I go in right now and I die, my game is fucked. And I, it's so juicy, you see. I can kill DK if I use my ulti. Maybe I can kill Ench, even though she's pretty tanky. But I'm dead because I don't have BKB. And then I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, guys, I don't want to be part of this. I don't have my BKB, 20 gold away. You can die on your own. This is the carry roll. It's a selfish roll. We lose Rosh out of this, probably. Yeah, we lost Rosh. So you see, this is the, the thin line when to decide how to take things. Because now, even though we, we lost edges, even though we lost two cores, I, I'm still flash farming. I'm still scaling. I still have my BKB. I can still outfight this monkey even potentially. And I didn't die here. For me, this was the key. I did not die. In skirmish, I don't want to be part of. Like I said, I want to create my own rules when I play. I don't want to react to bullshit. I want to see a specific moment. This is the moment that, if you, if you can see, I was patient for like, I don't know how, when did they got edges? Four minutes, like four minutes I've been patient farming. Now I got my shard, which helps me fight. I have my level 18. I do a lot of magic damage and I do a lot of right leg damage. And now it's time for me to show up as the top net worth and just take care of business <laughs> in a way. There is a fight on my terms. Not reacting. For me, this is this is actually most of the the, uh, the 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 most important story of this game. I never really reacted to anything that I didn't want to be part of. And again, guys, with this being said, because I don't this this is not uh, it's not black and white. Sometimes you need to get creative. Sometimes you need to do something crazy because some games are actually unwinnable. But this one, there was not so much stress. Like, you know, some games you're losing 25 to 3 score and then you're like, holy shit, you, we need to do something right now because we're not winning this game anyway. There are these games that you need to do something crazy, but that was not the case. And it doesn't happen that, that often. Next moment, I'm going to show you... Now there is the Rosh. Rosh fight. The Rosh fight, we didn't react to it. We got we played the fight on our terms. The main thing is that the fight was connected to Rosh. Like the, this is the, the more important piece of the puzzle. That it was not, oh, but we're gonna fight like here. Or I'm gonna be farming on this side when there is Rosh coming up and then I'm gonna lose Rosh. For me, this is the, the more important piece. And the next one was again Rosh related fight. I mean, we can watch the fights as well. But this is, since it's a team, this happens, like, we get a fucking insane shackle, we win the fight because of it. But I know that you guys are not gonna get we as your Wind Ranger in your pubs. You might play with something different, <laughs> with someone who might miss their spells even. But this shouldn't discourage you as long as you focus on the correct place of the map to fight. Then you're gonna have higher chances of winning the fight, so overall just playing a more structured game. And this is the story of this second series. And the thing is, again, you see a lot of similarities, some difference for sure than the previous one because I was playing from behind. But I showed you the more important points when it comes to carrying the games. And I'm sure you can apply them in your pubs and I'm sure you can also, uh, what is the word, explore further to what I'm talking about because not every game is the same. Not every hero is the same. There is stuff that you need to explore on your own. Because there is stuff that I need to explore on my own as well, on the opposite side. I don't know everything about Dora. I'm learning every day. So there is stuff that you need to explore yourself. Items are changing, meta is changing and so on. But these are the concepts. And yeah, that was the game too. The main things that I want to focus on.